Hi guys. Hi. Welcome. Kelsey Fry. Hello, Kelsey Doug Fry. Jones. Nice Tom Flounce. Good to see you. Here we are, London live. Beautiful day. No rain, no yeah, cold. I know. This isn't like London at all. <laughs> you two should be very, very excited. All these makeup artists and fans are gathering around. So tell me, first of all, how do you feel, you know, your career and coming to this, you know, pivotal moment to be recognized by your peers for yours and Mike's fantastic work on it's, Hellboy 2? It's, it's a little bit surreal. Um, it's just starting to sink in because of things like this. Where I'm, where I'm getting attention that I'm not used to, or not all that comfortable with just yet. Um. You know, I think that, you know, I understand that because I share that a little bit by having this opportunity to interview my peers. Mm -hmm. You know, I think as artists, we're accustomed to kind of being behind the camera and not really exposing, you know, how we think and feel and how we process what we For do. Sure. And it really kind of sets us, like I find that I'm stuttering a bit or my memory goes and I'm thinking, I'm glad that doesn't happen when I'm, you know, doing a makeup. So I, I relate with that, I understand it. But I think you should really absorb and soak in the moment and really I know, enjoy it. I it's know. a really great time. I'm trying to soak it up while it's here before it, before it goes away, mm -hmm. yeah. So now your relationship with Doug was not only in Hellboy, where you particularly played Abe Sapien right. primarily, but now you have three characters and quintuple the amount of days that you're working on camera. And, and he also made me up as the Silver Surfer in Fantastic Four. Oh, the Silver Surfer. Yes, yeah. that was also Tom and me. Yeah. yeah. So you two have a really kind of like a marital relationship in a way. <laughs> it's my favorite actor. It, it, the only thing and he's my favorite makeup artist. Oh, that's Look great. At that. <laughs> as it should be, as yeah, I should yeah. say. So tell me about that relationship, how it begins and how, it, you know, you can both interject how that comes about for the both of you and the concept and, you know, how it works, how you take care of him, the difficulties, the high points, the low points. Uh, oh, excuse me. Well, we're together so much. I mean, the longest makeup that we did was the full stage of Abe Sapien and it was a little over four hours in the second one and, and even longer in the first one. So we spend a lot of time together and nothing's off limits. And we got close, I think. What does that mean? I see a little bit of nothing's <laughs> off limits. Well, there's like no boundaries anymore. Like right. we'll, we'll do things to make each other laugh. Yes. Like to try and shock each other. Um, <laughs> we become like family though, for definitely. Yeah, for definitely. Sure. Like we'll a couple of brothers like, you know, yeah, 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 a couple of brothers like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what else can we say? Well, well let me ask you about the difficulty in um, the, the applications or, I mean, do, are you both in the conceptual process of what is designed? Uh, when it comes to the actor, I shouldn't be involved with the conceptual process. That's not my job. Mm -hmm. um, but when, it, when they ask for advice for me about comfort, is this, is this poking? Is that hurting you? Does that, can you see? Can you breathe? Those are the main issues with me. Uh, but that, that's left up to the, the, the makeup people, you know. Are the, uh, particularly on Abe Sapien, are certain parts of uh, your uh, work that you're wearing, is it practical, the makeup? Is some of it practical? Like the, like the little, looks like the gills or the bubbles or the raised oh, areas? Are oh, some of those practical in the sense? that you have to worry about mechanisms or yes. radio frequency uh, operations, things of that sort? Yeah. Uh, what you saw in, in the movie, what's practical in it are Doug's gills. You know, you'll see these kind of open and close. And it's one of the, the pieces that we have to secure first before other pieces. We have to find the right position, glue those down. And, and yeah, he's got all the the battery packs and all that that we need to hide in his utility belt. Cords go down his back. Um, in the film, you'll see the character blinking. That's a digital effect, like the squints and the actual post? blinks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Doug's eyes, well, Doug, Doug can't really see much at all. In <laughs> any character I play. <laughs> it's true. He can see out of the tear duct like a little bit for the we'll character. Down here and here because the eyes are built around this way. Right. So yeah. It's a really huge eye formation. Yeah. And somehow he's able to pull a performance out and like hit marks and work with props and yeah. I, I really he's don't know it's kind of how he does it. 
blindly like somebody can you just kind of naturally have an intuitive sense of where you're going to walk to and with, how you do your with rehearsal yes mm -hmm. once we go through it a couple times and I, and I get the geography of the room and where the other characters are and where my props are repetition will bring about a, a place where I can see with, the, mm -hmm. with my hands as well as my face mm -hmm. and that brings up the point of trust really and that, about the makeup artist and actor relationship I have to trust this man like he's my nurse because um, really because once the makeup is on me I become a nursing home patient I can't see I can't hear I can't feel and I can barely eat for myself so he, he and there's his, safety uh, involved as well safety yeah. issues too yeah. Tom has to be he's, he's the watchdog for all of that for me and uh, so, uh, so, so the relationship gets gets on a deeper level where it's like so I, I trust this man. So the two of you will be growing old together. Is maybe so. what you're trying to say to me. <laughs> I, I think it could so. very well be. You both will be crotchety old gents like, in a rest home like going. I already am a crotchety old gent. <laughs> you'll be, you'll be looking to Tom to walk you <laughs> to walk you down the hallway when he needs uh, some kind of attention. Like <laughs> right. Exactly. Needs. Exactly. Well, that is a really, really uh, intense relationship. I mean, I do not share it on the same level as the two of you have with my actors. But, you know, in the kind of the beauty and character world, I understand that to be that because people really rely on you to, you know, look out for those things, the safety and all of that. Um, let's talk about you and Mike working together and how that relationship began and how that's incorporated into with the other characters. And are you, and three questions, let me ask you three okay. questions. Are you primarily working with Doug? you know just on the whole production because there is so much that you have to you know, he relies on for you um, it's just kind of fallen into this this situation where I work on Doug's characters which I'm, I'm not given a choice really but if I was I would <laughs> <laughs> I, that would be my first choice uh, and I kind of ask for him too <laughs> to be honest with you yeah so we try to make that happen but in, and it doesn't take much to have that happen starting out yeah. You know, with somebody cold turkey. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I've worked with Mike on and off through the years on different projects, but when he formed his company, Spectral Motion, for the first Hellboy, mm -hmm. I came on to work with him on that. And, uh, and that's the first time I met Doug, too, even though I'd heard about him for years. And that's the first time we worked together was on that film. So you actually did the Silver Surfer after Hellboy. Correct, correct, mm -hmm. yeah. And we've done, like, little side projects. I think two shop portfolio pieces. We did the Vincent Price. Right, that's right. For Spectrum Motion and. The vampire thing, the Nosferatu thing? That I didn't work on, but we had the thing at, at Jose's, which I don't know what you call that character. Oh, right, yeah. The, so, a crazy mortician doctor yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Thing, yeah. So, besides the films we've been together on, there's some side projects. Right. So. And short, a short film recently, too. Where you exactly, made, yeah. 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 We've both come up through the shops, working in the studios, doing. What was the first shop that you worked at? The first one, uh, you Don. Kind of a give me a little real. <laughs> sure. You came to. I started at Don Post Studios making masks. My next job was with um, John Beekler, uh, kind of a lower level, low budget uh, enterprise. I was there for about a year, but I met some really good people, and just the connections I made helped me go to other shops. Um, after that, I was at Rick Baker's for a really short time. And then just bounced around shop to shop after that. What was your first, do you think, pivotal moment in your design or sculpting or mask making or, you know, when you were working in these labs that really grabbed you to be like, this is it for me, this is where I'm, you know, this is the avenue that I'm going down and really I, attached yourself to that? Well, it had been a hobby for a long time, so... As soon as I got my first taste of it, I wanted to you continue. Were a basement boy makeup artist. I was, yeah. I had the Dick Smith know, manual. It's a and genre of basement yeah, boy yeah. makeup artists. You know that, they're all here today. Yeah, yeah. That they silently, you know, open, you know, the Fangoria magazines or whatever right. magazine was their choice and fantasize about recreating. Oh, I'm telling you. For them. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, the first Fangoria I found, I thought I, people actually do this, and it was like <laughs> instructional, and I just that issue I just devoured, you know, and then. Yeah, that helped me know that it could be done. To see Corey, you know, leave this Corey Ackerman. Oh, oh, of yeah. course, of course. Yeah. Have you ever visited Corey's house? I went to his place once. Yeah. What was your first uh, big mass special effect prosthetic character uh, design or job that you really uh, felt that was an influence? Oh, well... As I worked, it was more like in a supportive role. Like, I would be given thin, things to do, like, you know, make this, make this, make this. 
Um, I, I keyed a couple of shows early on, and rather than working for someone else. Uh, I found that I didn't make any money doing it because it was too competitive, like you have to be really cheap to get the job. And also I couldn't do the job that I most wanted to do, like on the film. Like, oh, I, I'll give everything else away, I'll delegate everything, but i, I got to do the old age. Mm -hmm. And then in, in the 11th hour, you still don't have time because you're either supervising or in meetings or whatnot. And even that had to, you know, be given to someone else to do. So it's a nice dream to have your own place, but it, it didn't work for me, really. I'm more comfortable... You mean your own place, meaning your own design lab? And things yeah, like, like running my own show. Right. And, department heading. Um, but making everything, but too. Making everything. Yeah, not just in the trailer, but in the studio. Design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so... You want to be more of a hands-on, actually doing the work. I, I do like doing the work the most, yeah. I'd, I'd rather not be yeah, supervising kind of like people. All those elements to life, you know. I mean, they start out as paint and latex and powder and plastic and rubber and silicone and all of these types of things, and then it's combining all those elements together and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know making something come to life. For sure. Did you decide foam versus silicone um, in Hellboy 2? How did you and Mike come up with the final solution for mm -hmm. the endurance of people wearing? Uh, their characters and their designs? Uh, it's a maintenance issue, for sure. So foam was the most logical choice right. for durability and for weight. Mm -hmm. um, and for reuses. And reuses. Because yeah. reuse, you can take it off and then just... Reapply. Because it's all then painted, you know, and then you, it's kind of like the old, if you don't mind me saying, kind of the Star Trek version, where there were main characters all the time and they would just take their heads and hang them on a hook. Yeah, and we just kind of redo them. Right, because the apes seemed to make like you would use that head how many times? We had to reuse the heads occasionally, like, like three times tops. Three. We tried to stop at two. Yeah, uh, we reused hands sometimes and feet sometimes right. also, but the rest of it was fresh. You had a, like a whole body suit uh, that I don't think we ever reused. No, I maybe heard once or twice. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I heard that um, you know my friend Aaron Kruger. You know, yeah. we flew over here together, mm -hmm. and I know that you guys have a great relationship, working relationship. And she was telling me that you know the that Guillermo, the director, uh, really has a lot of influence. We were reading some articles, and then he really comes in and will alter things or change things because he's inspired by something to do. Did you run into that a lot, you and Mike, and you had to adapt to the changes for the director? That's one of the great things about working for him is he's so, he, he's hands on himself because he came from a background like we have. He came from a special effects makeup background. So he knows the process inside and out. And he's someone that doesn't want to go digital if he doesn't have to. He'd rather have everything practical, which That's is nice. cool. which is cool. great for us. Yeah, like that. And, uh, uh, let me just say, interrupt and say that that is a really great attribute to have as an Academy Award nominated artist, yeah. is the least amount of digital yes. effects mm -hmm. speaks loudly, you know, in the process of, you know, being selected. Mm -hmm. You know, I think in the end when people review all the nominees. Mm -hmm. So, sure. I think that's a really poignant uh, fact that it's good for people to know about because people automatically go to that place of where well, everything's just in post. Mm -hmm. And right. they don't realize that, you know, if you can do 97% of the work right there, right. you know, you are really speaking loudly for the director's concept and for the story and mm -hmm. for your work. And as well. for these hands here. Yeah. <laughs> see oh, these yeah. hands. Yeah. Let me see these hands. Oh. Nice hands. <laughs> You have to get your hands in cement and print your hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> come on, we're just teasing. So, you had good, good, good uh, creative chats with Guillermo? Uh, I wasn't really a part of those because um, there's a whole design process that happens before I come into the picture. Can you uh, explain that briefly? A little bit. Um, well, in the case of Abe Sapien, we were repeating a character that had already been established, so that that was in the past, that whole journey that it took to get to where he ended up. Um, the artists who are actually doing the sculpting and painting and, and designing are are more in contact, and then, then it filters to me, and I bring whatever I bring to it, whatever that is. But, Do you know um, what that is, just a little bit like one example of what that filtering is when it comes to you? Uh, it, it's, it's color, it's... it's um, I think it, it's things that every prosthetic makeup artist does, like trying to find the right place 
to put things so they move right and taking care of actor comfort. Like it looks great like that, but it hurts right. if I do this. So or maybe we're going to loosen the neck so it can actually move. Um, what else? Uh, the paint work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, keep pushing it so that it gets into a, a place where you're never satisfied. So I guess it doesn't ever get to that place if you're never satisfied. But, <laughs> but you're you're trying to uh, just better yourself. Mm -hmm. It's that challenge every day, like trying to do the makeup faster. It's only as good as or, the last time you did it. This it's true, yeah. yeah. It's true. You're trying to do it faster. You're trying to do it better. Make improvements as you go. Modify and it. Self-challenging yourself. You know, I'm imagining too in your own mind. Yeah, so. it makes it, it makes it more fun too if you set it up like that. Mm -hmm. If you're doing the makeup so many times. It can become very rote, so you need to set things up for yourself so that you're you're involved, you know, uh, whatever that is. So you know, anything you, you want to just add so that I can let you guys go to the panel? Um. <laughs> I want to say a real quick thing about one of Doug's characters. Okay, please. Um, I didn't talk about it earlier when we were talking about his limited vision. Mm -hmm. The Chamberlain character. <laughs> Doug's up on stilts. Well, not stilts, well, but yeah. Shoes, We're really black shoes. Black shoes. Taller than I am. Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing down. Vision is gone. He's got one hole yeah. to look through. It started out. We asked Guillermo, "Can we put some holes in?" He said, "Yeah, we put six in." He said, "You can have one." We closed up the other five. So he had this weird. I don't know. I don't even know where it lined up on you. It, it kind of down here somewhere, a one eye vision, but like so no, no depth vision. perception at all. Yeah. It's got the a, eyes of the character were up here, mm -hmm. blinking. Oh yeah. So mechanical head, then took away the use of his arms. Right. He was puppeteering his own puppeteering, arms. Puppeteering, like arms from the elbows, right. Yeah. Now the hands were mechanical, but he was doing the gross movements. And I think we got to run, don't we? That's probably us having to run. Yeah, I think we got to run.